Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome and thank you so much for joining our office hours with customer service webinar. Um, happy to say this is our second in a series that will be coming throughout the next several months. Um, I'm Steve Kapchak. I'm the director, uh, but really a proud co-worker of some of the faces that you're going to be, uh, faces and voices that you're going to be hearing today. I'm in the account management group. Uh, that's also known as customer service. We have just selected a unique name for ourselves here at TechSoup. Um, I wanted to just take a brief moment, certainly to welcome new members uh, uh, to TechSoup. Uh, we sincerely hope this is an enriching experience for you today and that you find um, our resources uh, to your needs. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of information out there for you to help grow and develop your nonprofit. Uh, but I, I want to make a special note to the folks that have been with us for a little while. Um, these past two years have been a challenge to deliver uh, the best customer service we could. Um, you know, as a nonprofit ourselves, uh, we had have, have very limited resources. Um, but in the last few months, uh, since May, uh, we've re-engineered our contact channels dramatically. Uh, every person in this room uh, on the team uh, contributed to that. Uh, and notably, we added uh, chat, which has helped us to provide a better one-stop shop experience. We found that emails were a burden simply because we don't have the staff to handle the volume and um, we're finding it so much more effective to be able to have direct live contact via chat and or calls um, but as you know like a nonprofit ourselves we're manage managing in really tight budgetary constraints but man has that brought out the creativity and then some um, I'd like to introduce our speakers today, all members of the account management group. Uh, they're presently all in leadership roles now, but all started serving you as specialists before they rose in the ranks to, uh, to become remarkable people, leaders, developers, and coaches. Um, their reach and their knowledge and their skills just continues to blow me away. Uh, first up, we have Corey Abood, manager in AMG, Kelly Garrett, Associate Manager in AMG, Rebecca Brown, Supervisor in AMG, and our very own Alicia Sudam, who's going to be uh, supporting us in the chat uh, box as the presentation goes along. Um, we sincerely hope you all find these sessions valuable, and thanks for your time. Welcome in. Okay. Thank you so much, Steve, for getting us introduced. Um, in case anyone was wondering, AMG stands for Account Management um, Group. Uh, that is part of the client services team uh, that is uh, going to be serving you when you contact us. Um, something to keep in mind, you'll see account management specialists, but it is part of the client services team. In case you ever get a little confused, we are customer service um, and account management. Um, as what Rebecca just put into our Slack channel here, um, we do have a Q&A feature in the webinar. Um, highly recommend using that one, a little easier to get back to. Um, if you have comments or anything you want to add to the chat, more than welcome to do that too. But highly recommend using the Q&A feature um, so we can easily track your questions and get you an answer um, while we're engaged here today. Um, Rebecca will be... Um, managing most of the communications while we're presenting. Um, our lead, Alicia, will be backing her up. Um, and of course, myself and Corey might be uh, chiming in here and there too. So happy to answer any questions you have. Hopefully this is nice and informative for you all. And we are gonna start off with our webinar here today. So one thing that we hear from a lot of members is how do I manage my account? Uh, you know, I need to change who's listed as representative. I need to update my shipping address. I want to change my password. Um, and that's something you can do on our website, um, www.techsoup.org. Um, and today we're going to be showing you how to do that. So first things first, um, in the top right corner, there is a, I don't know why it's cut off there, but there is a login button in the top right corner of our um, website. It does say log in. And you will be able to uh, click that, and then you'll want to enter in your information. Once you have logged in, you're going to see it replaced by a, uh, excuse me one second to see if I can get this a little bit smaller. Nope, never mind. Oh, 
apologies. I don't know why it's cutting it off there at the top. But anyways, um, there is a round icon that has a little outline of a person. Uh, this means that you are logged in and that is how you're going to access the area called your account. You'll see that drop down pops up when you click on the icon and then you're gonna have your account listed right there. You'll see the organization name and your member name listed above that. So once you uh, click your account, that's when you're gonna have access all of your account information. And there is a little bit of a nuance you wanna keep in mind. Um, you have your own personal member account, which has your login email, your name, your information. And then you have your organization account, which has all of your organization, organization's information. So once you get to your, your account area, you are going to see this page. Um, on this page, on the left, that is your member information. So if you want to edit your member details, which would be your first and last name, um, your login, email address, you can click on edit member details. Uh, if you need to change your password, there is the change password button right there. And it does show you what email address you is your login email um, underneath your name. Um, we do ask that all members have a real um, legitimate first and last name. Um, it can't be like your organization's name. Like I couldn't do tech soup as my first and last name. I would need to have my first and last name, Kelly Garrett. Um, and that is to ensure um, if say you call us, um, you can, we are going to verify who you are and that you actually have access to the organization on TechSoup and that we can make account updates or do requests based on you calling us. Um, so it is something to keep in mind to make sure you use a real first and last name, no IT department, um, no organization name. We don't want it generic. We want it to be legitimate first and last name. It can be your boss's name. It can be whoever's working the account. It can be what you go by. It doesn't have to be like your legal first and last name. Um, it can be an, your nickname, you know, things like that. But we do need what um, a first and last name to be able to identify you when you contact us. Next to your member um, profile information is your organizations. Um, you can have multiple organizations associated to your TechSoup account. Um, we have a lot of consultants out there that help nonprofit organizations and they get them registered, are one of the agents um, on the account and are helping them place requests, things along those lines. So right now I just have one here on my test account, but you could have multiple ones. And something to keep in mind is that when you're placing a request for a an organization and you've got multiple organizations listed, you wanna make sure that you have that active button selected next to the one that you're trying to place requests for. Um, that ensures that you've got the right eligibility showing, it's gonna to go to the right accounts. So when you log in, you're not like, where is this? Where is that? Like all that good stuff. Um, when you do have it active, you then can access different um, things on up here. Um, so account details is the page we are currently on. If say you're looking for your request history, so uh, you want to see all the requests you've ever re requested, or if you want to get an invoice, things along those lines, request history is here. And um, that's when you go in there and you can enter in a date range, you can enter in the request number, all that good stuff um, to locate the request. You can see if it's canceled, fulfilled, you can get the payment information, all that good stuff. It's fairly straightforward. So there's that's in there. Fulfillment emails is another great tab to go to. So whenever we send um, information, it goes to the organization information uh, email, which I will show you where that's listed in just a minute. The fulfillment email does usually CC the member email as well. So you should be able to see it in your inbox or spam folders, but say it didn't make it to you. you your security blocked it. It went to an outdated email address you didn't realize was the list on the account, something along those lines. Well, you can always access your fulfillment emails through your account by just clicking that tab and you'll just see them all listed right there and then you can go through them or find the request number that you're looking for and that has all the information that you're going to need for accessing your product or service that you got on TechSoup.org. Uh, last but not least is validation tokens. That will take you to our validation token FAQ page has the links to the different uh, member or different corporations that have partnered with us. Um, and you can generate a validation token to confirm your eligibility for their programs off of our website. Um, Slack is one company that does that. Um, that's very popular. We've got quite a few other ones. So highly recommend after this going into your account, clicking through those tabs and seeing um, what's in there. Um, if you haven't placed any requests yet, nothing's going to be listed in the request history or fulfillment emails, but still cool to go in and just navigate around, make sure you're comfortable and used to it. So, so 
Very important, updating your organization's information. Um, you do want to make sure that you're periodically checking to, um, that your organization's information is up to date to ensure that you're receiving your products and services um, and that your eligibility is accurate and all that stuff. Um, the 20 years as your IT manager and they're running the account, probably don't need to check all the time because it's been the same info. But if you have a lot of turnover, you have different folks that are accessing it, you have multiple agents, good idea to periodically double check that everything looks good and um, there's nothing missing or outdated. Um, so when you are in, um, just to go back really quickly, so see where it says test, test, that's where you can click to access this page here. And this is your organization detail. So it's going to have your the name that's listed in TechSoup, your EIN tax ID. Um, if it's a public library, it'll be your IMLS um, identification ID, um, your bu annual budget, your address. Um, and I do want to call out that while we have a shipping address listed here, almost all of our products on TechSoup, except for hardware, is electronically fulfilled. This means that it's gonna be a registration link. It's going to be a link to download the product and then a key to get it activated, things along those lines. So if it's a hardware product, that's when you wanna make sure your address is up to date because that's where it's gonna be shipped. Um, also, if you pay by check and we refund you um, or we need to return the check for some reason, that's where we're gonna be sending it. So you wanna make sure that's accurate for where the best place to send products and maybe refund checks too. Um, but if it's something like you go check out with QuickBooks Online, not going to be shipped physically. We don't send out CDs for software. Um, it is all electronically fulfilled using those fulfillment emails. Um, on this page, just to give you a heads up, um, there's a couple things that we have to verify before they're updated. So you're not going to be able to change them yourself. Um, that would be the organization's name. Uh, that is because only the organization that owns this account is allowed to use it to request products and services. Um, they're not allowed to share it with other organizations, individuals, give it away as a nonprofit program. Like say you're having a raffle, you can't get stuff off TechSoup and then sell it to somebody else. Um, and so we don't want, we want to make sure that organizations aren't sharing their accounts. So if you're doing an organization change and you're changing your name, we can definitely help you get that updated. We just need to verify that you did the name change um, before that goes through. Um, annual budget's also important that we refer, we uh, check that out before we update it. Um, this is because a lot different programs have different eligibility requirements. Some do have budget um, restrictions. So, you know, budgets over a certain amount or under a certain amount can affect your eligibility for certain products and programs. Um, that information is always on the product page. So you can just check that there if you're getting a message that you're not eligible. And then that might be a good time to go in and check is my annual budget accurate? You can always look at your 990 forms that you submit to the IRS um, to figure out what your annual operating budget is. Um, also your organization type and subtype. This is something that you pick when you register with TechSoup, but we in the account management group, um, client services, we go in and we double check your mission, your activities, all that stuff to ensure that you have the correct type and subtype. Um, you'll see that there underneath validation details. So if you feel that it's not correct, you won't be able to change that yourself. You will need to reach out to um, client services to request a review, and then that might lead to an update or it might be us just confirming that this is accurate. Uh, but we're always happy to review that information and look at it for you. Um, same with your qualification status. This one says qualified, but if it wasn't qualified, say it says IRS disqualified, um, qualification pending, things along those lines, that's when you can, um, uh, give us, contact us, see what's going on. Is there any documentation we need? So did you miss an update from us? Something along those lines. We're happy to assist you with that as well. At the end of this presentation, we will go over how to get in touch with us. Perfect. So another big thing we hear from members is where's my association code? How do I find it? Because that is how you associate a member account with an organization on TechSoup. Um, so that's why it's called the association code. And you can edit it at any time. And we do recommend that if you have a changeover in who's representing your organization. Say you have someone leaving the org, retiring, they've found another position, um, there's been layoffs, 
whatever happened and you have that change over, we do recommend going in and editing the association code to re-secure your account because that's the code that someone uses to become an, um, an authorized agent, also called a representative um, on TechSoup. And that will ensure that your um, information and is, uh, is kept secure and nobody's placing requests for products and services without your knowledge. So we'll highly recommend always going in. You can also, I recommend making it something simpler. It's a gen, when we generate your account first thing, it's this long jumbled um, number thing to make it very secure. But you know, you can always update it to something that you and your organization use. Like if there's a password you like to use, you can maybe put it in there. Whatever you want to put, you can. Um, we don't monitor how you edit it. There's some certain restrictions that will pop up and let you know that you know certain characters aren't allowed, stuff like that. But for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. So once you are in here, as I showed you, edit details is how you'll get into editing the details. You'll be taken to this page. Um, you can audit the association code here. But the number one thing I always tell members to make sure is kept up to date is that organization email. A lot of very important communications come from TechSoup. Um, and are sent only to the organization email. Um, it's like notifications for payment for uh, for renewals, because there's quite a few products that auto renew, where, uh, where a new request will pop up on your account and we'll send you an email letting you know, hey, we're gonna process this soon, or hey, we need money, the card's no longer working, it was saved. Things along those lines um, are only sent to the organization email. So really important to keep that up to date and make sure it's a um, an active inbox and not something that's gonna bounce back to us or get lost. Um, some members think that, oh, it has to be different than my login email or it has to be the general email to the entire org. So like info at TechSoup, I've seen stuff like that. If that's not the best email address, I wouldn't recommend using it. You can welcome to use the same email address that you used for your login. If that's your direct email and you're the one who's placing the requests and the one handling everything, put your email in there to make sure it get, makes it to you. But again, um, if you have like a fulfillment email or something, you can access it in your account, but there's other stuff that you might miss that aren't saved on your account. So very important to keep that up to date and all the other information, you know, just good idea to make sure that's all accurate. Um, once you've edited what you need to edit, there's a save or you can cancel. Those buttons are at the very bottom of the page to let you move forward. There we go. So another very important thing, as I kind of was talking about, was making sure that you have the correct people on your account. You can have as many authorized agents, um, also called authorized representatives, to list it on your account. Um, just keep in mind that these folks can edit your organization's information. They can place requests for products and services on TechSoup. So you want to make sure you're only allowing people that are authorized, part of your organization, volunteering at your organization, working at your organization, that they're the only folks that are having access and are requesting stuff for your organization's use to complete your mission and um, activities. Again, we don't want it necessarily, a lot of the programs don't allow for individual personal use, account occasionally they do um, but that's called out on the product page so you can always go look at our website go to the product or service you're interested in and it will call out if there's special friends and families programs is what they're usually called um so pretty easy to invite or remove folks um one Remember, if you have someone that's kind of doing it on their own you can just give them the association code when they register with TechSoup after they uh, um, enter their personal information, uh, so their name, login, email, password, all that stuff, it's then going to prompt them to add an organization. And um, the add an organization option is also in your My Account. It's right above where the edit details was. Or sorry, it was right above where the organizations were listed. It says add organization. So if they've already created a, a, a member account and they're saying, hey, I need this association code, you can just go in, grab it and set and pass it along to them. And they'll be able to move forward with associating their member account to the organization account. Another thing is that if they haven't registered, they're really confused on how to get going or they want the more information, I recommend going to the invite an agent button. That will generate an email with all of your account information, including the association code, and it will direct them to sign up and use that association code to um, associate to the organization. So that's a great automated email that they can get sent and then they can hold on to for when they're ready to actually get going with being a representative on TechSoup. 
If you see someone that shouldn't be a representative anymore, like, oh goodness, they haven't been with us for five years. I hear that a lot where it's all, someone's finally coming back to TechSoup and they're looking like, oh goodness, that was our CEO five years ago. Or, oh, that person just left us. Or, oh, you know, they retired. Things along those lines. You're welcome to remove anybody. And then you can always re-add them too if needed. So say they come back to your organization. Um, I find that nonprofits, we have a lot of folks that start with us, go out and do something else, and then like to come back. So you're welcome to add and remove um, agents as you see fit. We trust that you um, know your organization, you know your um, volunteers, your employees, et cetera. You know who should be on this account. So we trust for you to add and remove and manage that to keep your account secure. So that is the um, basics of navigating the account management on TechSoup.org. I'm going to hand this over to my colleague, Corey, um, so he can go over how you can get in touch with TechSoup um, if you need to. Sure. Thanks, Kelly. Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, as Steve mentioned at the top, uh, we've been actively uh, reevaluating and assessing um, the various ways we can support our members, you all, um, with our staffing and all the things that any nonprofit has to contend with as far as budgeting, all those things. Um, we feel we've got uh, some strong options uh, to provide uh, support uh, throughout the week uh, for any questions you might have around account management, the things we went over today, uh, products, services, uh, any issues you might run into, we're here for you. And so here's how you can reach out to us for help. Uh, we have... Uh, live chat, which is uh, our brand new fancy feature <laughs> as of the past year and a half or so. Um, and it is available on every single page on TechSoup.org, um, Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific. Um, in the mornings on Monday through Thursday, we have phones from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. So the handoff is phones at 11 and switch from phones to chat till 4 p.m. Uh, Fridays, uh, we focus solely on chat support, and that is available the entire working day from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, you'll know live chat's available by looking in the, in the bottom right corner of, again, any, any page on TechSoup.org. You'll see the help bubble, the help bubble, I apologize, uh, at the bottom right corner. And if you click that, it will have uh, a couple different options. First, it's going to show you uh, relevant articles based on the page that you're on at that moment. So it could be something that might help you with a question you're having. It's worth checking out. Um, there's also at the top uh, an FAQ search feature that you can use to search through articles, FAQs right there on the spot on the page you're on. Um, you'll know live chat support is available though, because at the bottom of that widget, when you click that help button, you'll see, it, as you can see here in the slide, live chat, that little button. If you click that, you'll actually be able to engage directly with one of our staff, a, a living person that is there to help you get through any of the situations you might find yourself in, provide any help uh, that you might need with your account, uh, any and all of the above, uh, we're here for you. Um, so uh, also, again, as I mentioned, in the mornings, Monday through Thursday, we do offer live phone support. And that is from 7 a.m to 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the number is there at the bottom, 800-659-3579. Um, again, a great option for those who prefer to uh, speak with someone versus live chat. Um, if we go to the next slide, we also realize that when we're not in the office, it doesn't mean things don't come up that need addressed. And so to, to help remedy that, we've created a support site so you can see here, support.techsoup.org. This site houses all of the most helpful articles we offer. It has FAQs for our various programs and services. Um, a lot of the more common questions you might come across around account management are actually, you can find answers in the articles on this. It's, it's searchable. Um, it also has the same uh, chat and FAQ bots, widgets. At the bottom right corner, as you can see there, the, the help bubble. Chat is there as well uh, if it's during business hours. Uh, but again, outside of our business hours, um, we have this in place all day, all night, 
uh, for uh, many of the questions that uh, you may uh, need answers for. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Corey. Sure. Uh, yeah, we're here to help. We love, you know, that's why we got into customer service in the nonprofit sector. We want, we're here for you. We want to help you. Um, that help bubble is, is always there, as Corey said. If you don't see the live chat pop up um, that was highlighted in the previous one, it means we're probably, um, it means that we're probably not available. We are usually available during these times. Um, if, but there is occasionally, you know, we recognize holidays. We have the days off for those. Um, we're not available Saturdays and Sundays, um, things along those lines. So it's just something to keep in mind. We are also based on the West Coast. So all of the hours are Pacific Standard Time. So if you're in a different time zone, you're having trouble contacting us, I would just double check that you're in the right time zone um, or you're looking at the Pacific time zone and making sure you're lining it up. Um, that's usually the issue when if you folks are saying, oh, you're always closed. And it's like, ah, it's because of that time zone difference. But um, phone and chat, it's real people on these. Uh, um, you're talking to a live person. So keep in mind, we're not using chat AI or anything along those lines. It's a real person who's managing multiple chats at the same time. So just to be patient and um, they'll definitely help you. Because again, that's why we're here. We want to help and we love the nonprofit sector and we're a fellow nonprofit ourselves. Um, you know, we know you need the support and we want to give it to you. So really happy to have uh, had you guys here today. Um, just want to make sure there's no other questions. It looks like some of the Q&A are popping up. Um, uh, oh, yes. And to let you know, yes, uh, TechSoup events. I just saw Don um, asked about the logins. There's a couple logins on our website. So if you have a courses or events, those are two separate logins because um, they're technically on two separate sites. You'll see at the top in the URL, it says like events.techsoup, things like that. So it will be, you do have to sign up like you did um, and you will have to have a separate um, login. I recommend just keeping it the same email address and the same password as your regular techsoup.org login will cause less confusion. But again, up to you, um, but there are separate logins um, for that. Um, and, um, that should be mostly it. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else that we want to go over. Um, and I do appreciate that the, uh, the website configuration, we love feedback. So, you know, you're welcome to post on our forums too. That is listed at the top on our community. Um, we have foreign forums. We have wish a wish list for products and services we don't offer. Um, we're happy to take comments and feedback about the website, things like that. We just ask everybody to keep in mind that as a nonprofit ourselves, sometimes our resources are a little bit more limited. So we're not able to, you know, have as fancy of a website as say, Amazon or, you know, Google or things like that, um, since we do have our own budget and our own nonprofit resources and things along those lines. Um, well, oh, I, I appreciate seeing a lot of thanks and, you know, learning these for these learning sessions. Happy to be here for y'all. We're going to keep trying to do these um, once a month, every couple months, as much as we possibly can. Um, so really appreciate your attendance and I'm glad to hear that it is um, helpful and you guys found it useful and all that. Um, oh yes, and then there should be a survey that pops up once you exit Zoom. We do ask that if you can to please fill that out. It helps us adjust um, as needed um, and make sure that we are presenting what you need to know and it's meeting your needs. Um, so really appreciate that. I'll give it one more minute here. Um, or we've got, yeah, I'll give it one more minute here see if there's any more. Um, communications, um, any more questions, anything else you'd like. Um, if you go on our website at the very, very bottom of pretty much every page, there's a contact us. So we'll take you to our contact us page. You can always check that to see what the best, see if there are any hours have changed, see if there's any other communication um, pathways. But for right now, all the information we gave you is accurate and not planned to change, but just calling out, we have a contact us page. You can always go to if you're wondering, wait, what were the hours again? Or what was that phone number? It's definitely on our website. Perfect. You're welcome to the folks that are chiming in. And again, feedback. Great. And uh, again, 
then, you know, navigating the website, I highly recommend just poking around. You can't do any harm poking around, you know, going through your My Account, checking things. We have that product catalog, which gives you donor drop downs. We have the community one, which is how you access this through the events page. We have services, a lot of options up there. So just I highly recommend going to TechSoup.org and looking at all the options at the top there in the black header. Um, all are clickable and no harm clicking around and exploring our website a bit more. Awesome. Seeing just mostly thank you. So I'm going to start wrapping this up, folks. Again, really appreciate it. Keep an eye out for our next client services office hours that we're doing here. Um, we are hoping to have more information and we will be sending out a recording of this and a slide deck. Um, so you will see that come through your email. We also have um, a archive of all of our past events. So if you're curious what other office hours we've done, we've done one on eligibility and then this one. Um, there's also other great um, events in there. So highly recommend going and looking at our archive stuff. You can watch the recording, you can download the slide deck, all of that good stuff. Everybody, happy Friday Eve, as I like to call Thursday, and have a wonderful day, and, you know, do good out there. That's what we're here for as nonprofits. So see you all in the future, maybe.